Hello, welcome to the Dragon's Tongue. This used to be a great outcrop, but unfortunately, Mother Nature is starting to slay the dragon. This was a world-class outcrop. This is an excellent example of a Paleo Valley wall, which is something we don't see very often. As uh, in this part of the world, the green slime, as I call it, covers everything and it hides the good geology. But uh, in West Virginia, I've been able to find three, maybe four places where you can actually see a Paleo Valley wall. And you can identify several criteria that you gotta have incisement, obviously, but also you wanna see rotated slump blocks within the valley. If you, uh, that, that was a pretty definitive thing. It, it, it's hard now to get a good look at it. And it comes up and dies out under this little sandstone up on that upper bench. And the dragon's tongue per se here is just a, a rip up where Pete, if you remember your coalification, coal is formed from peat, which is coal-fired, just accumulated dead plants. This peat is a very fibrous material during early uh, deposition and accumulation. And when you have something disturb it, you end up getting these little fingers of ripped up peat that can actually float in the water. Or, or, or move down a hillside. This is... So when you see the actual dragon's tongue, this is where they end. They, 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 they just kind of finger out into this slump shale bed and they do not continue across the outcrop. And this is what we call the Beggarstown Coal. It's in the Glenshaw Formation, part of the Connemaw Group. And there will be marine zone above, which is the Ames limestone. And there's a Brush Creek marine zone below this. This coal is thick enough in places around here to be mined, but clearly it's not thick enough here. And it, it, it's a, what we would call very potty. So we're in the upper Pennsylvania. Uh, we're about uh, 400 feet below the world famous Pittsburgh coal. We probably all have heard of Pittsburgh coal. But we have, we have three good slump blocks in here, and it gives the same sequence as this paleosol, well-developed paleosol going up into a coal bed, slump with rotation going on. When it was fresh, you actually can, we could walk up and actually over here on the right, you can see another little rotation going on. Uh, it, 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 it's difficult at this point to point it out, unfortunately. I'm going to have to call the apartment highways and complain about this. As a dedicated taxpayer, I like to see my rocks. Now, if you can look on the other side of the road. In the uh, shadows over there, you could actually see uh, how the beds have been disoriented. This is not tectonic. This is uh, depositional. So Let's go up and look at the coal. <laughs> ah, here we go. This is good here. So here, here we're at edge of one of these rotated slump blocks and the coal bed's coming in. We'll get a close up up of it in a minute. But we can see where the peat, when it was still in a peat form, was ripped up and uh, deformed prior to being coalified. And this sequence coming up from this well-developed paleosol, the light color stuff, into the coal bed is repeated down the outcrop. When we get a close-up look at the coal, you, you, you can see how it interfingers with the shale here that it rotated. The peat was ripped up and we had an injection of fine-grained muds into layers within the peat. And for all you environmentalists, I'm going to take a brave step here and realize coal does not kill on its own.
you can touch it and, 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 and it's not bad. But we can see the, uh, and if you look at the orientation, you can see the orientation of these rocks are changing. And here we have this mud underneath got pushed up into the peat. So you got mud, what is now coal, coal. And if you look at this bottom bed right here, you can see based on the cleat orientation that this is oriented differently than this stuff up here. No, 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 notice coal bed, and it seems to have a lot of vertical fractures on it. Those are called cleats, and they, they, they seem to be a compaction feature in a coal bed, and you'll have two directions of cleat, a face, what they call, the miners call it a face cleat and a butt cleat, and a face cleat, if you want to mine that direction, keep that in the face, the coal cuts easier. But do, the, these are just uh, tectonic, and when, when you get good faces and do your strike and dip on the two, Cleat directions, they, they, mat, they tend to match up the uh, joint pattern overall in an area in a sandstone or shale bed. But you see how the orientation in this coal as we come along, let me get on the side of the camera. And the technical term when I see this in the field is called FUBAR. You, if you if you would scale this up to a mining scale, you'd be very unhappy when you see this type of thing in the coal mine. But uh, the machinery doesn't like to cut rock, and there, 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 there's no profit in sandstone. All right, so the, the story as we kind of interpret this outcrop with the slump blocks is way down at the bridge, far end. We're on a massive sandstone quartz pebble conglomerate. And on top of that, we have a well-developed floodplain paleosol sequence with a lot of uh, iron carbonates within them. And in places, there's actually calcite nodules or caliches. And as we come up, we see there's some places that uh, bedding is preserved. And as we come up further, if I don't fall off the outcrop, you see we go from a, we got slight color change now we're going up and you kind of get a cream colored within the the soil this is totally no bedding is preserved and it's loaded with uh anchoritic soil nodules it's not actual laterally uh, continuous so anchorite would be somewhere between a dolomite and a calcite and then on top of that we have a little bit of bedding that you could just see under the coal bed off to my right there's some preserved bedding. And then the coal comes in and it, there's a little light leader coal, a well-developed, totally homogenized mudstone, which represents another soil, and then a coal bed on top of that. And then we cap the whole unit with a channel sequence. And the fact that we've been able to see this repeated constantly down the outcrop, and when this was a fresh outcrop, you could follow all these bounding surfaces out the whole way. It uh, suggests this was something very special and we, we've had a lot of fun on it.